Okay then, team preview number three. It's time for the Chengdu Hunters. We're overgoing, we're overgoing, we're going to the East region for this one for the first time in our series of previews. And Chengdu Hunters are an interesting team. Um, they've never been the best of the best. They've never been the worst of the worst. So Chengdu have always been a team that can cause some surprises. I think, I think we can definitely say that. They weren't one of our inaugural season teams, but they have been in the previous two seasons. In the 2019 season, they managed to get a 12th place finish. Actually pretty respectable, and then last year they managed to get a 14th place finish. But, last year we have to take into account, they were in the East region. And the East region, or the, what was called APAC then, it was a very competitive scene, with the likes of Guangzhou Charge, Shanghai Dragons, New York, Hangzhou, Seoul, there wasn't many teams lower down the league. When you look at the lower part of the overall standings of last year, most of those teams come from the North American region. So, Chengdu Hunters, they had a hard time of it last season, and if you kind of transplanted them into the North American region, you may have seen a different outcome. But, Chengdu did have a very strong end to the season, and they caused some surprises, just as the Chengdu Hunters always do. They have been a team to do that. They've been consistently one of those teams that are always middle of the league. Around that middle of the league area. 14th, 12th, they're always there. The question is, can they improve on that in 2021 and finally push into that top 10 and the upper echelons of the league? Right. This will obviously depend on their roster. And there's been quite a few changes in the Chengdu Hunters in this season. So, what they've done is they've shipped out Aiting and Bacon Jack, the two Taiwanese influences in the Chengdu Hunters. They've both retired, and I wish them all the best going on. That's a that's a transfer roundup thing. I'm not going to start bringing that here. Anyway, then they have moved two people over to Team Chaser. Team Chaser is their new uh, Chengdu uh, Academy team, so Team Chaser will be competing in Chinese contenders next season. Those were Kyo and Lengsa. Both of them are over at Team Chaser now, and they will obviously hopefully do quite well in that team. Molly is the only outgoer properly, and he'll be going all the way over to the Shanghai Dragons. So that's kind of a promotion for Molly, and it does mean that they have a position to fill, but have they filled it wisely? Let's take a look at this entire Chengdu Hunters roster, all 12 of them, because yes, they have a full roster. Well, 11. It's kind of a full roster, but yeah, Chengdu Hunters are a stacked team with a lot of players. They are very, very well equipped for this season. First of all, we go through the players that obviously are being retained by the Chengdu Hunters. Yveltal has been retained, but he's on a two-way with Team Chaser now. So, he's actually the longest-serving player on the Chengdu Hunters now, but we're not expecting to see a massive amount of Yveltal because of his two-way status. Then we have Elsa, who's still remaining on that off-tank role, although he will have quite considerable competition on that off-tank role now. And I still think Elsa will remain in place, though. I do think that, and... With Late Young moving over to the two-way role, which is our third person here, then it means that it definitely is the idea of the Chengdu Hunters to go down the route of making Elsa the staying off tank that we're going to see for most of this season for Chengdu Hunters. Is Elsa a great main tank? No. Is Elsa a good main tank? I'd say so. It's not too bad. But he isn't going to set the world alight, that's for sure. Then we obviously have a Meng. A Meng is... A great ball player, but he isn't a great flexible main tank. And that is something that Chengdu Hunters have lacked. Seriously. Like, when it comes to playing meta, Chengdu Hunters have always come up short usually. And this is usually because they just they, they like to play the off-meta stuff and catch people off guard, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes it works with a massive effect. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. So they needed to sort that out. And this season they've definitely done that. We'll get on to that in a minute. So then we come up to the swathe of DPS players. Jinmu and Leave will be still with the Chengdu Hunters this season. Very valuable. Jinmu and Leave have incredible pop-off potential. And that's what you want to see from your DPS players. Carry potential. Incredible consistency. Jinmu and Leave. Jinmu's maybe more meta-specific. But they do have a lot of depth now to Chengdu Hunters. Which is not something they've necessarily lacked before. But depth and quality they lacked before. And I like that. Like, Jimmu and Leave, I think, were essential for Chengdu Hunters to keep hold of. And they've done that. So I think that's pretty cool. Then we have the two new guys coming in. So this is Jimmy and Kaneki. Jimmy and Kaneki are very interesting. 
Jimmy is coming in from Ultra Prime Academy. Ultra Prime Academy was the academy team of the Guangzhou Charge. He's a hit scam player and is also, yes, very young. This tends to be a tradition with this current uh, Chengdu Hunter side. A lot of these players are young and it's preparing the Chengdu Hunters for the future. Now, Ultra Prime Academy, they didn't do massively well in Chinese contenders last season, but Chinese contenders was pretty stacked and is shaping up well against Korean contenders right now. It currently actually sort of lords the Asia region having won the gauntlet with Team CC. So that's kind of good for China right now. And Jimmy comes out of the Ultra Prime Academy, was one of the uh, brighter people on the Ultra Prime, Ultra Prime Academy. And it'll be interesting to see whether he starts. I don't think he'll start, I believe, somehow. But I think he's also a great uh, player to bring in and specialize on certain things for the Chengdu Hunters when needed. And then we see Kaneki coming in from Team Cat. Team Cat was a, uh, it was a real outlier in China last year. Came from basically nowhere and went and got second in the season two, week three, losing only to Team CC, which was completely out of nowhere. And that's really impressive. He's a, he's a flex player, known for his fire, but he has a good Sombra. And Asian teams, generally from China and Korea, like to use Sombra a lot. They will very often substitute a Sombra in for a Tracer a lot of the time for the use of the EMP. And I think Kaneki will be the Sombra player for Chengdu Hunters this season. It'll be interesting to see how his, Cheng how his uh, Sombra shapes up against the rest of the East region. Chengdu Hunters, they're not a bad team. And he's got very good placing, Kaneki, with uh, Cosmos of Veritas Gaming and LGD Gaming before that. LGD Gaming is, not a, is a name I haven't said in quite a while now. But yeah, I don't think he's necessarily a bad player. Are these two starters? Maybe not. It depends on the meta, especially between Kaneki and Jimmu. But I, I think Leave is going to be the hit scan player for the Chengdu Hunters. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. We also, however, don't forget that Leave is also incredibly... Uh, versatile himself and can play things like the Doomfist. So, again, this Chain to Hunter side, it's very versatile. Very versatile. But now we move on to even newer names. So, then we see the support Nisha coming in. Now, Nisha, he's coming in from uh, Billy Billy Gaming. Billy Billy Gaming, one of the well known names out of China. Billy Billy Gaming is the academy team of the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, actually, Billy Billy run the Hangzhou Spark and own it. So, this is a main support for the Chengdu Hunters. Nisha, again, very young, only 18, same as Kaneki, only 18. Again, it's a trend with the Chengdu Hunters. And Billy Billy Gaming, very consistent team. Very consistent team. Third and third in both Season 1 and Season 2 of 2020 Contenders China. And both times they lost out to the, the eventual winners. So, in Season 1 they lost to Team CC 3-1. In Season 2, they lost to Flag Gaming 3-0. Both of those teams went on to win the competition. So, a third place seeding in, team in, in China in 2020 is not too bad. Is honestly not too bad and is promising. Definitely a lot of promising prospects at the Chengdu Hunters. And it tells me that maybe they won't hit their heights this season, but next season they possibly can. And Chengdu, they are the team, in my opinion, the Chinese team with the most potential. And that includes the teams that aren't all Chinese, obviously like Guangzhou and, and Hangzhou and people like that. They're not all Chinese uh, in terms of their players. But Chengdu, in my opinion, have the most potential out of all of these teams. So Nisha is a great pickup for that main support backup now. And he's actually going to be playing a lot of main support when you think about it. Because the weird thing about Chengdu is they've gone four slots for each of the DPS and tank roles, but they have not gone four for the support roles. And one of those supports is a two-way support. So we're almost certain that the two new supports they've brought in are going to be the starting supports. Nisha on the main support, and we will talk about the next one in a minute. Because now we're going to talk about a main tank. This is Gaga. So, I call him Gaga. I don't call him Ga9A. I call him the Gaga. Um, he's coming in from Team CC. What a massive pickup. He is one of the biggest prospect main tanks in Asia. One of the, definitely the biggest prospect main tank in China. He is a great main tank. 
to come in from Team CC. Team CC have been lording it over Chinese contenders pretty much the whole time, apart from Season 2 where they lost out 4-3 to Team 2 Flag Gaming in the final. But in Season 1 2020, Team CC not only won, they swept the final. In the NetEase tournament, they not only won, they swept the final. And in Contenders Gauntlet Asia 2020, they not only won, they smacked Genji 4-1. They lauded it, not just over, not over China, over Asia as a whole. Team CC are the best team in Asia right now, and Chengdu Hunters have gone and picked up the best tank they could probably get from Asia, apart from maybe you can make an argument for Mag. Mag going over to the Washington Justice. Gag, Gaga is, my goodness me, massive prospect on the main tank. And what else does it offer the Chengdu Hunters? It offers them versatility. It offers them an Orisa player, it offers them a Winston player, it offers them a Reinhardt player. And he can play the Wrecking Ball as well, but if they want to bring in a Meng, then they can do to play the Wrecking Ball. But, honestly, I don't think we're going to see much of Meng this season. I'd be very surprised, because it, it, this Gaga covers everything. He's so much more versatile. I think this is a massive main tank pickup. I honestly do. I think this is the biggest pickup they've made in this entire offseason insane and i would be almost certain that he will be the starting main tank for chengdu hunters and i would expect a a gaga elsa tank line for the chengdu hunters this season and i don't think that's bad i really don't think that's bad he could re honestly gaga could be one of the breakout main tanks coming through and i'm talking like gujue level gujue was one of the very standout winston players You've got some pioneer Winston players. Gesture was one of them. Gujue was another. He's at the obviously the Hangzhou Spark. Gaga could be the next generation of that pioneer main tank players, where main tank is becoming less protection, more brawl, and Gaga could really be the pioneer of that sort of tank play. It'll be interesting to see what happens when it comes to that. But our last player that we're taking a look at is 1987 that's how i know him because he was always called 1987 he's actually called far away 1987 but i don't want to call him that i want to call him 1987 because i like that name 1987 coming in from team cc as well again another massive massive pickup for the chengdu hunters and guess what he's still only 19. one of the best flex supports in china once again known for his Anna and zenyatta team cc he has exactly the same record as uh as gaga and oh my lord 1987 and Gaga, I think, are honestly, going to be so important to the Chengdu Hunters this season. Like, I honestly think they could be the most essential parts of this team. And it finally moves Chengdu Hunters away from relying on weird comps and DPS carry. It takes them away from that, and it moves them back to being, it, well, not even back, but it, for the first time, I think Chengdu Hunters are versatile. They've got every meta covered, and they honestly could be a very surprise package in this season. Very surprise package. I'm really interested to see how they settle into the league. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm hyped on this Chengdu Hunters team. And when you look at their coaching staff, Rui is back. And that is insane. Rui left for health regions, reasons. He was their coach back in their first season in 2019. When it didn't have the players they've got now. Completely inexperienced in the Overwatch League. At that level. And China wasn't on top of Asia. Far from it. Now times are different. And Rui was a good coach for the Chengdu Hunters back then. He's got Creed and Yao Ji alongside him. A completely new coaching staff. Well. Kind of old but also new as well. And. I honestly think. There is. An incredible amount of potential in the Hunters this season. Incredible amount of potential. And yes, they are in a maybe tough region. But is the East region as tough as it was last season? Yes, you can add the Valiant and the Philadelphia Fusion into that region. Take away London Spitfire. London Spitfire, Valiant, you, you're giving, you know, like for like there. And pretty much Valiant probably aren't going to be that good. I'd imagine Chengdu will be better because even if Valiant go all Chinese, then Chengdu have still picked up the better parts, in my opinion, because Valiant are going to be left over with the scraps. And, again, I, th I expect Valiant to be much like London's level last season. 
New York, Excelsior, and Guangzhou Charge are fairly unproven, and I think Chengdu Hunters can be better than them. Actually, much better. Philadelphia Fusion. We do not know how that team's going to play out, but I tell you what, I reckon this Chengdu Hunters team can match that Philadelphia Fusion team, and that is a hot take. It is a massively hot take, but I honestly believe this. And when it comes to teams that I really don't see them competing with in that region, I see them competing with every single one, but perhaps not consistently beating. It's Shanghai and Seoul. That's the only two teams that I can't see Chengdu consistently beating. And I may even be wrong there. I do like this Chengdu Hunters team a lot. Don't know whether you've realised. And when it comes to Hangzhou, I think Hangzhou versus Chengdu, battle of the big boys in terms of roster size. I think that's a pretty even one. Even Chengdu might win that. If they picked up Shy, that would have been interesting, but Hangzhou Spark got interest got Shy in the end. Um I really rate this Chengdu team. So let's look at their first fixtures. And they have got the best fixture they could have hoped for in the first uh match of the season, because they play the Immortals Valiant. Yes, I'm not calling them the other one. They're Valiant, they're Immortals Valiant, whatever. And that should be the easiest game they can get going into the season. That Valiant team will be unprepared. It's not properly put together yet. We still don't know a roster for the Valiant. It's not good. Well, at the time of recording, we don't know a roster for the Valiant anyway. And I honestly think Chengdu will probably sweep that. I would hope they would be able to sweep that. Then they go into a match against the Shanghai Dragons for the second, the second match of the season. Now, that's going to be tough. But it's also going to be a massive indication of where exactly this Chengdu Hunters team is at. If they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chengdu Dragons and at least take them to a close a close match, then we're looking at a Chengdu Hunters team that are extremely competitive in the East region. And if they are com extremely competitive in the East region, they'll be extremely competitive full stop. Because Chengdu Hunters will still have Chengdu Hunters will still have that kick of unpredictability to them that will be able to put them in front of perhaps NA teams, especially even the top NA teams, if they can at least compete on a level with all of the teams in the East region, including the Shanghai Dragons and Seoul Dynasty, that kick of unpredictability going into a, a match against the NA teams in the Intercontinental Tournaments can just send them over the edge. Chengdu Hunters, the ceiling is very high, but also the floor is very low. They could disappoint, they could exceed expectations massively. This could be a breakthrough a season for the Chengdu Hunters, you just don't know. And that's very often the case for the Hunters, actually. But this season, more than ever, you don't know. Then they have a third game against the New York Excelsior. I wouldn't be against backing Chengdu Hunters to win that. Depends on their first two matches of the season on how and how they go. Then they have the Philadelphia Fusion in the fourth match. Back to the Shanghai Dragons in the fifth match. That can be a tell of how far they've come. Because that'll be in the lead-up to the June Jails tournament. So that'll be a very, very big indication of how they've improved over, say, a month and a half. Then we see them against the Philadelphia Fusion again. So... There's a lot of... None of the matches in the East region, apart from perhaps the Valiant, will be easy. But it's how well you can cope with what you're having thrown at you. And I think the Chengdu Hunters are more prepared than ever to say, you're throwing this at us, we can do this. We can do this to counter this. We can do this to counter this. They're not off meta one tricks anymore. With Gaga coming in, with 1987, Nisha, Kaneki, Jimmy, alongside the existing leave, Jimmy, Wameng, Late Young, Elsa, and Noveltal, they have got everything they need to be diverse across all metas. And everything they need to run. And that's incredibly important with hero pools, even though we're only going to see them in two of the four tournaments we're going to see throughout this season. So, Chengdu Hunters is a team with a lot of potential and the possibility of being much better than we expect. They also have the possibility of being middle of the pack, just like they've always been. However, I don't think they're going to be below middle of the pack. I'd be inc It would be a massive, massive letdown if they were, say, below 12th place, in my opinion. Because I don't think they... I think they demonstrate more skill than that in this roster. It's a promising year for Chengdu Hunters, and it could be the best year for the Chengdu Hunters yet. Are they going to be right up there? I don't think so, but I could be proved wrong. Again, hard to predict this Chengdu Hunter's side. 
but I like where they're going with it. Not going to lie, I like where they're going with it. But that is going to be it for the Chengdu Hunters. Next up, we have the lovely one that is always the Dallas Fuel. Oh, I love talking about the Dallas Fuel. And it should be a really exciting one, the Dallas Fuel, for this year because, oh boy, don't they look different to how they've looked before. But that's uh, that's that's for next time. Anyway, all the socials, socials, seashells, socials, socials are in the link in the video description for Illusion Gaming and myself, Twitter, uh, Discord, join the Discord server for discussion over there, and Twitch and everything else that you want, even though I don't stream right now, but hopefully I will one day. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to leave it here for this one. So thank you guys so much for this video. If you liked it, give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.